Hello everybody, how you doing? And welcome back to another episode of the Cholton Athletic Career Mode. We're on episode 6 today. And as you can see, this first fixture here we've got is against Blackpool at home in the Checker Trade Trophy. So just as I sim this, I am, uh, I've changed the team a little bit as well. As you can see, there's uh, Bloomberg getting his debut game. We've also got Mascol, Prattley, Reeves, uh, even Nicky Jose, And only five subs are able to be named in this competition, which is really weird. But as this game ticks down, I don't really care too much about this competition. Uh, I do have to just say that first of all we're about to announce the September goal of the month and if any of you have caught on yeah we only scored one goal in the entirety of September so I mean that narrows it down in this game we are actually 1-0 down to an ex Cholton Loney uh, Joe Dodu and it looks like we might actually lose this game 1-0 away at Blackpool and that just sums up our form in recent games and Oh, it's just been really, really bad for Cholton. And I'm hoping that now we're in October in a new month and we did defeat Coventry in the league at the very, very uh, last league game we played. I'm hoping that we can move on now and actually start picking up some good results. So first of all, we're going to try and continue that momentum from the victory against Coventry with this away fixture against Walsall. I can't remember actually where Walsall are in the league. I have a feeling they might be quite high up actually, maybe even in the top six, but I might be completely making that up. As you can see, we have reshuffled the team and Veta Kelly grabs a goal for us, the number 14. We have reshuffled the team to our best start in 11 really, um, other than Chris Solly who is injured. We've got Lanners back, uh, Forster Kasky and Arebo back, players like that. We are currently winning 1-0. Lanners doubles our lead and this is a good sign this is going to give us some confidence going in 3-0 now and the substitute Billy Clark comes on and grabs a goal. Ferrier gets a goal back for Walsall. But that's happy days. We've won on the sim against Walsall. Uh, I did trust Cholton and the, the Cholton squad to be able to pull that result off and they have done it. Now let's move on to our next game which I think is against Barnsley which is going to be a whole lot more difficult. So here we are for this home fixture against Barnsley. Barnsley probably one of the most likely teams to finish in the top six. Currently though sitting down here at 11th with 18 points in 13 games not a brilliant return for them we have managed to worm our way back up into the top six after those back-to-back -back victories against Coventry and the game that we just played also against Walsall and I believe I was completely completely lying about them they're actually 23rd so uh, yeah I was thinking of Wickham I think the W's got me so we are fourth now 22 points still eight points off of Scunthorpe United the leaders and it has been our playing form that has let us down in this game so far in this career mode so so, we've got this game against Barnsley. They are no doubt going to be a difficult opponent, but let's try and actually score some goals and beat Barnsley at the Valley. So, just before we get into this one then, there are two players returning from injury in the last nine days. So, on the 11th of October, Chris Solly was cleared and was able to return to the first team squad. And just today, it is Carlin Grant, a very, very important part of our team, who has also been declared fit to come back into the starting lineup. Or maybe the subs bench first, maybe he's carrying a, a bit of a, a fragile frame and he will be able to be used in the starting lineup very very soon nonetheless but Veta Kelly will continue getting the uh, the nod up front next to Lyle Taylor for now and before I get I know we're about on the 20th yeah we're literally on the 20th of October but before I forget like I did say at the beginning of the episode we are just going to have a look now at the goal of the month for September in the career mode so it is going to be this goal from Jake Forstakaski unfortunately was the only goal so there was absolutely no competition it was a decent celebration from Forstakaski after but that was the only goal we scored so no choice player of the month then I am going to give it over here to Anthony Deke still. He does have one of the better averages for us in the league. He's got a 7.1 average and in the Carabao Cup he's also got a 7 which is a 7.1 out of uh, 10 overall which is really really not too bad and especially considering we've been really really poor and he's had to come in and fill the vacancy that Chris Solly left in his injury absence. I think Deke still has done a fine job in September so he despite the fact that we didn't win pretty much any games uh, is going to be the player of the month for September. So now that's over we can actually get into this game we're obviously sporting the red kit as we are at home we are at the valley barnsley in this pretty nice actually black puma kit i believe and now let's get in now and see how the addicts are gonna line up as well as our opposition barnsley the player to watch is lyle taylor for this game and as you can see there he is the fifth top scorer although he is really joint second in league one with seven goals pretty decent return from lyle taylor he has missed a few sitters for me when i've played with him 
but he has also scored a couple as well. So Lyle Taylor, we will be looking towards you to get a goal today. So we line up like this then, Dylan Phillips in goal, Deke still Bauer, Pierce and Page as always at the back as the same it has been for the last few games. Lanez and Fosu on the wings with Fulster Kaski and Arebo in midfield. Another lineup in the midfield there that has been very consistent for the last few games. Taylor and Veta Kelly as well, the striker partnership for the last few games. And I'm hoping to get some more out of these players um, in this game today because for the last few games, they have just not been able to stick that ball in the back of the net. Is it all about to change though? Let's find out. Davis is in goal for Barnsley. Cavare, Pinnock, Jackson and Pinalos are at the back. Isgrove, Potts, Dougal and Moat are in midfield for Barnsley. And then what formation are they playing? They are playing a two up top and it is Moore and Tiam uh, up front trying to score goals for Barnsley against Shelton. We are going to do everything in our power to stop them getting their goals. Let's go and find out what's going to happen in this game. We've got the ball here with Lyle Taylor. Lyle Taylor, little short pass to Arebo. Arebo to Fosu. Fosu inside to Vettikelli. Vettikelli turns. Vettikelli's going to shoot. And all oh, just goes wide. Our first chance of the game. Vettikelli couldn't find the target. Phillips is going to play this one short to Anthony Deke still. Can see a through ball straight away. Can see another through ball straight away. Here comes Lanez. Lanez now is going to wait for a body. There's a lot of space over at the far post for Tariq Fosu. Get this. Oh, the contact was not clean. And yet again, the timed finishing is really, really messing me up. I cannot finish to save my life, but hopefully we can get one in the back of the net because we are getting chances after chances in this game. Lyle Taylor picks up a loose ball. Lots of space for him. He's going to wait for runners. And he's done well here. He's going to find Tariq Fosu, who's going to take a shot. Oh, Tariq Fosu hits the bar. Is our luck in front of goal going to continue? We've had so many chances to put ourselves... Just give ourselves goals, basically, in the last three or four games that I've played. And again, it just, just, just doesn't go in and it goes and hits the bar and goes over. Annoying. It is going to be a corner ball for Barnsley here. And I'm not sure who's going to whip this in. It's Moat and he's going to get the head on it away from Lewis Page. Can Lewis Page send us on an attack? He gives the ball away. Let's get this away, guys. Arebo, really nice clearance, but we don't manage to clear our lines fully. And there comes a shot and that one fizzed wide from Moore. Really nice chance for Barnsley. That's their first real threatening chance of the game. And the number 19 put his laces through that. If that had gone in the bottom right-hand corner, you can't really complain because that would have been a perfect strike. As it happened, though, it was actually wide of the goal and it remains nil-nil. Lanez, waiting for options. Very narrow. We're going to send this out wide. Into Page. Arebo to Forster Kasky, who's going to try and turn. Forster Kasky still with a chance in the box. Forster Kasky still... Manages to wriggle a shot through, but no power on it in the end and doesn't trouble the keeper. Come on, before half time, loads of space for Forster Kasky to find. Uh, it's going to be Tariq Fosu over here. Tariq Fosu. Uh, it's a decent ball. Let's get this over here, Vettikelli. Here we go. It's, it's Lanez, the new signing, gets the shot off. We are going to have a corner just before the half time whistle blows. Corner comes in. That's not bad. Oh, no one meets it though. Jason Pierce. Uh, oh, that's got to be a foul. A rebo though with a chance. Oh, and Davis plucks it out of the air. Doesn't manage to go into the top right corner from a rebo. I feel like the advantage was not long enough there. I would have liked the free kick, but I think it is going to be half time now. It is. And the two sides are going to go into the half time break goalless, but we have been all over Barnsley. And if we do not come out of this game with three points, I will be speechless because we've played a lot, lot better than them. Barnsley looking a bit more lively this half. Here comes a shot. Oh, I thought that was in. Thought Barnsley had broken the deadlock there, but it just goes wide yet again. And it is the number 19 again. Uh, I, I haven't actually caught his name, the number 19. He's definitely a striker, though. It's actually Moore. And apparently that's come off of our player and it is a corner to them. Interesting. I didn't see how that happened, but I'm sure you guys did if you had the opportunity to see that. Maybe rewind it away. This corner goes, though. And Chilton, we need to get a foothold in this half. Here comes Tariq Fosu. He's got to find the right pass here. He does find a good pass to Vettikelli. Is Vettikelli going to get this? Where are my runners? Where are my runners? Oh, Taylor just held his run there. I felt like Taylor was really surging through on goal to make space for Vettikelli to pass to him. And he just held off for some reason. But we have got a corner. Going to be put in from Lanez. Near post. Away it goes. Lyle Taylor. Is he going to turn? He's going to find the through ball. Come on, we got a score. Oh, that's gone wide as well. I think it might have actually been a save from the keeper. We are going to make two substitutions now. Josh Cullen and Billy Clark come on for Lyle Taylor and Jake Forster Kasky, respectively. We're not going to change the formation or anything like that. We just need some fresh bodies who are capable of changing the game on the field. Let's put this corner in now. It's a decent one again from Lenners. We do rise high, but we get the ball cleared, or Barnsley get the ball cleared, sorry. And they are going to be off. Better Kelly, keeping the ball well. 
Over here, it's Vettikelli in the box. Vettikelli, surely! Vettikelli gets the goal in the 79th minute and Charlton take the lead at the Valley. Finally, against Barnsley, it's taken about four games to actually get a game where we've gone 1-0 up. He just slides on his ass in front of the camera. It's fair play, Vettikelli. I wouldn't know how to react after this long without a proper, proper good result either. But I suppose the Sims do count for the players, but certainly not for me. And this feels like... Uh, just long overdue, basically. It was a really nice left-footed finesse finish from the number 14, Igor Vettikelli. And he is proving to be a really, really useful striker for us this season in the absence of Carlin Grant. And it's actually going to be hard for Carlin Grant now to uh, knock Igor Vettikelli out of the team. That's his third goal, as you saw there, in League One. 80 minutes played, 1-0 Cholton. Here we are with Lanez. I don't know whether to go to the corner flag or to uh, just keep possession. I probably will do the latter here. It's uh, Deke still to Aribo, Aribo to Cullen, back to Aribo. We might be able to get a shot off here, we do. And maybe Vettikelli is offside here. No, he's not because it came off of the Barnsley player. We are still with the ball. I'm just not sure. Maybe that was a mistake because now we've given away possession. And only two minutes left, so that should be full time. And it is full time. There we go. We finally managed to grab three points by actually playing the game. And world class difficulty apparently is not too much for me to handle. We shake the hands with the opposition manager and that is three points on the board in League One for Cholton after I have played a game. Could you believe it? So man of the match for that one with a 9.3 was our new signing Diego Lainez. So fair play to him, played very very well, didn't put a foot wrong, lots of nice passes, nice crosses and a couple of shots as well that were deflected and things like that. Everybody else literally on a 7 or 8 other than Billy Clark and Lyle Taylor. So well played Charlton. We're, we're back on form. And now an all important match against none other than ex Charlton manager Carl Robinson's Oxford United. We are again at the Valley. It's a Tuesday night, October the 23rd, one of our last games in the month of October. We have made, I believe, one change, which is Arebo who comes out in place of uh, Darren Prattley. So here we go. We have got the game underway here. Nelson picks up a booking in the sixth minute for Oxford. I think Oxford generally get promoted in League One if you if you aren't controlling any team. So they are generally a, a good side and considered a good side by the game. Uh, and we are at 60 minutes now and no goals for either side. Clark comes on for Vettikelli. Solly comes on returning from injury for Bauer. Mackie actually puts Oxford United 1-0 up. That could be a bad bit of news for Charlton, and it is. The game does finish 1-0. Unfortunately, we have lost Oxford United at the Valley. So just to end off today's episode, then, we are going to have a look at the league table. So 15 games played now, a fair few portion of fixtures we have gotten through, and we are sitting there with 25 points from those 15 games. It's not too bad, but we would expect to be in that top two, or we would hope to be in that top two, let's say. So Scunthorpe leading the way on 31 points. Sunderland there on 21. 28 points in second so we are only three points on the same amount of games played uh, three points behind Sunderland which is which is okay it's not bad we've still got uh, room for improvement and we've still got players to improve ratings so I'm not too worried about keeping the pressure on on that top two for the rest of the season Wickham are there in fourth Luton in fifth and Oxford United who we unfortunately just lost to at the Valley are in sixth place we've actually lost six games which is the most out of anybody in the top six so if we had just converted some of those to draws maybe we could be looking at, at the same points or if not just a couple points closer to Sunderland and Scunthorpe as it is though third place not too bad let's see how things are going on down at the other end of the table Gillingham and Wimbledon have fallen off a little bit and right down here at the bottom Walsall propping up the table Shrewsbury not considered that good on this fee for it seems even though they did finish third in the league last season Peterborough a very very surprised team to be down there in 22nd place and even Bristol Rovers I wouldn't necessarily expect to be down there in 21st position. So that is how the table looks before we end this episode. Let's just now go and look how the top scorers and that kind of thing are looking because we haven't actually taken taken any time to look at that kind of thing yet in the career mode. So I like how they've added the matches to goals ratio in this top scorer section over here. We can see that actually top of the uh, goal scoring list is Wilkinson of Gillingham. He scored nine goals in 15 games. The only Charlton player charting on him here was Lyle Taylor with seven goals in 15 games our top scorer at the moment 
and the only notable ones I can think of really, Lee Novak, obviously ex Charlton player there with six goals and of course up near the top here we do have Joseph Dodu of Blackpool who has got nine goals, another ex Charlton player. So let's move on to assist and we can see there are no Charlton players that immediately jump out but Lyle Taylor is actually our top assister um, alongside Jake Forster Kasky and Lanez. I don't really know what determines their placing on this on this leaderboard it might be games played or something like that but yeah they are the only players on the charts for us Lanez, uh, Forster Kasky and Taylor. Phillips currently ninth in the clean sheets and he's got four so he's basically joint second. Um, Luton, Southend and AFC Wimbledon's goalkeepers are the only ones that have more clean sheets than Dylan Phillips and everybody else on four. In terms of Cholton, Lyle Taylor obviously there with 10 in 19 if you include the pre-season tournaments. Colin Grant unfortunately missed a lot of football but 3 in 8. Vettikili 3 in 16. Fosu 3 in 20. Lenners 3 in 13. Forster Kasky 2 in 20 and then a few players down here have chipped in with a goal. If we move on to assists we can see that Arebo is actually the top assister in all competitions. Taylor Grant, Fosu, Lanez and Forster Kasky on three each. Vettikili and Page each have one. So I am going to end the episode there, guys. We are going to have to start thinking about incoming transfers very soon. So make sure you leave a comment and say which position you would like me to pay the most attention to in the transfer window. But other than that, that is it for episode six. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. The next episode of Charlton Career Mode will be coming very soon. So stay posted. Take care, everybody. I'll see you later and sweet.